Malo Lele, and um, welcome to you all, each and every one of you watching from different different countries, different um, universities and, uh, and backgrounds. Uh, this is the third part of uh, of this video series, which um, as you are aware of, which is entitled uh, Sydney Realism to Adonis University and Loawenism or Loaw University in uh, the Kingdom of Tonga. Or uh, as I always said in the previous uh, uh, videos, uh, in other words, is about the philosophy of Sydney realism uh, to Adenisi University and then Loawenism. So, uh, and what is that philosophy? Uh, as I have mentioned in the previous videos, uh, the philosophy is Sydney realism is realism. We have realism in general, um, which some aspects of realism were begun in uh, ancient Greece, um, specifically by Heraclitus in the pre Socratic philosophers. And then uh, from there, there were various works in the, uh, among the philosophers in the previous, uh, uh, in the um, uh, pre-Socratic uh, era. And uh, like Democritus and uh, Pythagoras and Parmenides, they have some, some realist ideas in there works apart from uh, from the um, monistic view to life and to reality um, but um, I will come uh, in other time maybe in this series or in another different series and talk about the pre-Socratic philosophers but um, um, now and then I will go back as I have done in the previous videos, to, to just bring some of their works into uh, this discussion. So, um, the outstanding realist works in the uh, or pre Socratic era or among the the pre-Socratic philosophers um, was mainly the work of Heraclitus of uh, Ephesus, Ephesus in Asia Minor uh, in Ionia. So, uh, and later on, I think uh, it's the work of Socrates and uh, uh, Plato and Aristotle, irrespective that they had some uh, idealistic and monistic and uh, dualistic and uh, rationalistic aspects in their works. But what I'm trying here to, to, uh, to unfold that there were some realist uh, aspects in their academic positions during the pre-Socratic era and in the Socratic um, period followed by the works of Plato and Aristotle among others. And then from there, uh, there were uh, some realist um, aspects of 
works of uh, the people in, in the philosophers in the Hellenistic period, and then um, comes to, to the fall of the Roman Empire and the rise of, uh, of Christianity. And uh, there were, uh, again, some aspects of realism uh, that, um, that were observable uh, in the early period of Christianity. And um, we go from there until the 16th, the 17th, the 18th, 19th century, especially in the 16th century where we started. Uh, the world started to see and experience again some fertile and original minds um, that were emerged in Europe and, uh, and um, in other parts of the world. But I'm talking particularly about how realism was developed. I'm just highlighting uh, how it um, had developed in the you know, from, from pre-Socratic era to the time of Socratic, Socratic, uh, so Socrates, Plato, and uh, Aristotle, and uh, then from there to the uh, scholastic scholars in the, in the rise of Christianity, people like um, Saint Augustine, you know, in the early stage, St. Aquinas, and uh, later on, we started to, the world started to experience and observe people like um, um, Machiavelli, Nico Machiavelli in the 16th century, and, um, you know, um, Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, you know, and we have people like David Hume, um, Leibniz, we have Berkeley, we have uh, Russell, and then, uh, you know, and then, and then more analysis, more interpretations and talk about the idea of, of, um, of uh, some aspects of the idea of realism. So it was fragmented when we look back to how realism was uh, or had been developed in the past up to modern societies. Um, but until we, the world came to like the 17th, the 18th century, you know, uh, from the German idealism the French uh, uh, German idealism and rationalism, the French um, idealism and rationalism, and then we have uh, the British empiricism and rationalism and idealism, and then uh, the uh, the modern scholars. Uh, especially in the United States. And uh, people like uh, William James that I talked about in, in the previous uh, video, in the second part of, of this series, uh, William James, one of the outstanding realists in America and a few others that I will um, come to and, and talk about them. Um, yeah, we have uh, James Joyce and a few others. We have Sam, Samuel Alexander that I talked about that influenced uh, Professor John Anderson and, uh, and uh, especially William James with his, uh, his idea about realism that John Anderson used for writing his master. And since then, Anderson uh, had used the concept of realism 
in every fields of study and particularly philosophy where he embarked on the idea that education should be based on the discipline of philosophy and uh, and uh, I will now come back to John Anderson and um, and um, the scholars that had influenced him in Scotland to finish up my explanation and uh, discussion about uh, the Hikalian, his Hikalian philosophers, his teachers and mentor, and also uh, how uh, how the the works of William James have turned him his educational life to stand in opposition or against Hegelianism. In the last uh, uh, part, part two, I was talking about Immanuel Kant and uh, George Wilhelm Frederick Hegel, Hegel and Kant. I was um, I was trying to, to just um, highlighted uh, some ideas about them or their philosophical positions, and uh, mainly because to to just um, demonstrate or um, show you how, especially Hiko and the Hikalians, uh not Hiko, the Hikalians, because Hiko died before John Anderson um, became uh, a philosopher, but um, but his his, his Hikalian um, um, teachers and and mentor that I mentioned. Um, In the previous video, uh, like the Edward and, and John Caird, um, Robert um, Adamson, and uh, a few others. Um, so I will uh, try uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, within our half an hour uh, series is to to talk about scholars, philosophers um, that have influenced John Anderson, and uh, as I as I have um, classified it, you know this is. Um, influential scholars on his life is uh, under the topic of intellectual uh, genealogy or genealogies. And um, it's very important for me uh, talking, you know, in my view, uh, it's very important for me to, to talk and to, to see how in some way, how they they had influenced John Anderson, you know, these scholars and these philosophers. Um, as you may recall, those of you who watched the, the, the second part of this, this series, uh, I talked there about um, um, the two main topics that I have used and employed to direct this video series. Uh, one is the philosophy of Sydney realism and 
how it is um, how is it is connected and and in how it you know had an impact on Andenese University and its philosophy and then um, the Loawenism or Loaw University. So that's the first or one of the topics that uh, that I've been using to to for this video uh, series, um, the philosophy of the Sydney realism. The second topic, two topics, as I mentioned. The second topic is intellectual uh, genealogy, genealogies of Anderson. Of Professor Fudahelo, who founded Adenese University, and um, myself and a few others who founded Loao University online, or Loao Listen. So, um, in the last video, I um, discuss or I talk about um, Kant and Hegel and the Hegelians. And I'll continue uh, here with some of the names. They were well-known scholars who also influenced Anderson and uh, most of these people. Uh, apart from the Hegelians. Not all Hegelians were the only uh, scholars that have shaped and influenced John Anderson, but the realists from, from the empiricist movement or scholars or philosophers uh, in Britain, and also um, some philosophers from continental Europe, and especially uh, the United States, with people like uh, like uh, William James, uh, as I mentioned, James Joyce, and and a few others that I will come to, and and they are so important because the academic and the philosophy of John Anderson in the Sydney realism were shaped and were influenced by these people, especially the realists, uh, realist philosophers, and they turned him um, away from Hegelianism and the Christian idealism of um, Hegelianism in Glasgow and in Scotland, where he was growing up, before he moved with his wife, Jenny Bailey, and um, his son, Alexander Osenti, to Sydney University in Australia in 1927 become a uh, philosopher of the Department of Philosophy, a professor as well, and also the Ch Chalice Chair of Philosophy in the Department of Philosophy and at the University of Sydney. So, uh, as, as I have touched before, he was brought up and, um, and he was taught by the Italians and then he was changed by the realism of William James. He turned and then uh, opposed and stand against his former Hegelian 
teachers and mentor. And uh, he built up and consolidated and developed his new realism, which was and is still known as Sydney realism. Here are some of the philosophers that they influenced him as well. I talked about Samuel Alexander and uh, E.G. Moore uh, influenced John Anderson as well. And um, E.G. Moore's idea or theoretical philosophical conception on goodness uh, was largely used by John Anderson, influence Anderson on his view of goodness, which I will come back to, to philosophers like that who, who marked, um, uh, you know, uh, some clear points of influence on Anderson. I mentioned in the last uh, video philosophers like John Bennett in Scotland, in Britain, uh, influenced that he influenced him a lot. Uh, William James, uh, they were both realists. realists. Um, James Joyce um, and um, Sam, Samuel Alexander, Also, um, Matthew Arnold. I will talk also about Matthew Arnold, philosophers and literary scholars. Uh, one of the intellectual genealogical person who shaped John Anderson's uh, scholarship life. Yeah. Very interesting. Matthew Arnold, very interesting people, scholars, and very um, realistic in their books. Okay. James Choice, William James, John Bennett, Burton Russell also uh, influenced John Anderson, and he delivered a few, uh, a considerable number of lectures on Burden Russell. Um, Sigmund Freud, Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud and Karl Marx, I'll talk about them as well. Uh, and um, they were among key scholars who, who Anderson talked about uh, them a lot. Eh? Uh, George Sorel, Sorel or Sorel. Um, that's another scholar. Um, Campatista Vico. Yeah. Um, Henrik Ibsen. Fyodor um, Dostoevsky from Russia. Herman Melville, um, and uh, he was well read with uh, the Marxist works of Ingalls, uh, Lenin, Trotsky, Berkham, um, uh, Perkarim, Koteski, and Stalin. So, uh, um, some scholars, you know, contemporaries at the time of John Anderson at City University, they referred to him as a Marxist, a, a true follower of Karl Marx and Marxism. And uh, as I just had mentioned, uh, had just mentioned that, um, 
you know, he was well read with uh, the Marxist works, not only Karl Marx's work, uh, works, but um, those of Inkos and Lenin, uh, Trost, Tro, Trotsky, Kautsky, Kautsky or Kautsky and Stalin, as well as Beck Heron. Eh? So, um, finally, I would um, I would like to to just briefly, as as I have touched in in the first part of this video, uh, this video, um, how. Um, the Greeks um, they were how they influenced him and they shaped uh, and helped to polish and refine uh, the philosophy, the Sydney uh, realism, the philosophy of Sydney realism of John Anderson. Um, and from the pre-Socratic philosophers, especially Heraclitus of Ephesus, and uh, also Thales with, with his first question of what is being, what is real, around the sixth century, uh, around the same time with uh, Heraclitus. Uh, he talked, he, he talked and he taught uh, about the works of Thales and his student Anaximander and his student Anaximenes. And then he focused largely and mostly on Heraclitus. His theory of fire, he, he had a very long uh, lecture series, a very lengthy one on, on Heraclitus. And uh, my teacher, our teacher, mentor at Athenese University, Professor Futahel, wrote a book um, on Heraclitus. It was, uh, and it is entitled uh, Heraclitus of, of Ephesus. Um, Futa believed, according to Futa, that he uh, was one of the Andersonians or students, uh, latest students of Anderson, that uh, who who continued the works of Heraclitus, of, of Professor John Anderson on Heraclitus rather. Um, and I will talk about Anderson and Heraclitus and Professor Futahelo of Atenesi University and Anderson and Heraclitus and, uh, and Professor Anderson's influence on Helo's view to, to, to philosophy and education and her, but I'm trying here to talk about and to, and to highlight um, the influence in the works of Heraclitus on fire, on locus, on uh, chains, uh, complexity, conflict, harmony uh, that um, that had influence. Um, John Anderson, he was a real uh, high uh, Heraclitian scholar. John Anderson. Um, Socrates, he, he was a follower of Socrates, um, especially in the realist uh, aspects of the work of Socrates and, um, and few others, but uh, I think our time's almost uh, finished. And uh, I'll just quickly wind up and and um, and stop there for for now. I'll come back in the in part four of this series, which is sometime this week. 
Um, but uh, before I um, finish off, um, Anderson's earliest works at Sydney University was his review and um, examination of um, F. Schiller's logic on propositions and judgment, and also the truth of propositions. And his first um, outlining of his realist position at the university after his works on, on Schiller's logic that I just mentioned, he wrote his article on empiricism, empiricism um, to, to begin to lay the foundation at Sydney University and within Sydney realism how the British empiricists have influenced uh, him in Scotland and in Sydney. Here, uh, people like um, David, uh, David Hume, uh, um, like one of the founding fathers of empiricism, um, Anderson uh, believed that understanding and inquisition for knowledge is based on empirical, on empiricism or empirical um, evidence and also the use of thinking, of reasoning itself, based on logic or the guiding tool of logic. His article on empiricism that I will uh, talk about and also uh, his view about propositions. I will talk about in the next, um, before I continue with the, the topic of intellectual genealogy. I will talk about in the next, um, next series, next um, video part four. And then I will continue with the topic of intellectual genealogy. Um, how Anderson um, influenced his former or early students at Sineoni. I'll just recite them, the names of, of some of them, well known. Um, John Passmore, they were all philosophers. John McKee, um, David Armstrong, Eugene Kamenka, I, uh, Professor Agustino Mahina and myself and uh, a few Athenesis when we were still at the ANU, Australian National University, we, uh, we had some cool time with Eugene Kamenka. In, uh, he was the head of the Department of Philosophy at the Research School of the ANU. We had, um, we, we had some time talking with him about uh, Sydney realism and how it's connected with Atenisi University that we were all studying. Professor Dr. Agustino Mahena, Leota Itasia Bonoa, Sione Fagaosi, Sione Fagalata, Di Paleri Oponoa, uh, Lord Duyafitu, we were all students from Atenisi at the ANU and we used or we had, uh, sometimes we had um, discussions with Eugene Kamenka. Um, none of these Andersonians are still alive. Also, um, another one is Jim Baker, who wrote two or three books about John Anderson. Sydney Realism is one of them, uh, social political uh, philosophy, something like that of John Anderson. 
and another book, I think, Education. Uh, but Jim Baker, we, as I mentioned in the last video, we were working with Jim Baker at the University of Sydney trying to revive uh, Free Thought Society, one of the main brands, um, uh, brands of, of Sydney Verison. Uh, Jim Baker and a few and the Saunders that I myself work with them at Sydney Uni. Uh, also, um, among his former students is uh, Alec uh, Ritchie, David Stowe, Sandy Anderson, Kim Larkos. Some of these philosophers, they were teachers and mentor of uh, Professor Inoke Fotuaka when he was at Sydney University. He was he was there in the eighties before I went there to do my PhD in um, at Sydney Uni at the Department of Sociology and Social Policy uh, in nineteen ninety three. From ninety three, I was there as a part time student until ninety seven, and uh, I couldn't finish my PhD there. I didn't finish it because I fell sick. Um, very ill and ended up on wheelchair from there up to now. And, um, and when I fell sick, uh, we were about to form, to revive and to register at the University of Sydney and to uh, form again, to reform again, the uh, Free Thought Society of John Anderson. But because I, I fell sick and ended up on wheelchair. I was the one who led the whole project. So we we stopped there. And I, I haven't met since I fell sick. Uh, all these Andersonians, uh, especially Jim Baker, uh, Professor, philosopher Jim Baker, and, and those Andersonians that I was working, I was working with um, up to now. We, we have been contacted by uh, some of them by uh, uh, by writings when um, in a few years back, but I haven't, I haven't seen them or talked to them. And I hope, I hope this video, uh, maybe if they, you are there or if they watch me on this video, I would like you to contact me. Uh, my email is loau, L-O-A-U dot university at gmail dot com. I'm in Canberra now. I'm traveling. Normally, I travel back and forth between Canberra and Tonga to run uh, our university online, which uh, has a branch here and the headquarter in Tonga. But thank you very much for for watching, and uh, and I'll come back um, a few days from now, a couple of days from now. Thank you.